crunch time in the men's sprint competition. Well, let's hope that uh, Chris always got enough in the tank to take this one. It's certainly doable. More experienced of the two. Tough for him having uh, just been beaten by Jason Kenny for that final ride off. on top of his form at this uh, this world championship Perkins. Still doing quick Perkins of course very very fiery he won't be phased by the reputation of Sir Chris Hoy he's gonna have a real go here he sat up on both occasions against Bourget he decided that he hadn't got a chance, but obviously here he feels he may just be able to stretch Chris Hoy. One lap to go, and it's Hoy leading this one out. And here comes a challenge in from Perkins. Perkins to go and get up on the side of Chris Hoy, but Hoy's very, very powerful. Although, oh, he's come out of the sprinter's line on two occasions there. Now then, did he take the line away from Perkins? We may hear more about that, Chris. Well, it wasn't done on purpose, I don't think, but uh, the way the judges have been incredibly strict here, we may be seeing that reverse out again. Now, Perkins there... He was threatening him, wasn't he? We're he waiting. Was actually that bump that pushed him up, off balance, so I would actually say that it wasn't uh, Chris Hoy's fault that he came out of the line there. He was pushed and then drifted out. He was intimidated, really, wasn't he? And just to confirm that the result stands, and Chris Hoy is one up. Gregory Bourget then, twice the world champion against uh, Jason Kenny. And this actually is a repeat of the final uh, last year in the world championships in Appledorn in the Netherlands. And on that occasion, uh, Kenny didn't have an answer for the awesome power of Bourget. Now then, can he do it this time? Really, the culling exercise here, the early stages of this uh, spring competition for Bourget was just a training exercise because nobody at all has been able to stretch him. His imperious form has shone like a beacon. Now he's on fire as well. Is uh, young Kenny, 24 years of age from Bolton. Former world junior sprint champion, gold in Beijing for the team sprint, and of course silver in the sprint there, beaten by Chris Hoy. Are we looking at the man here that will represent our country in the London 2012 Olympics? Face here on Bourget. A hard man. A fair man when you sprint against him. Every move being watched by Florian Rousseau there on the inside, the coach. Just two laps remaining, they're certainly going slow for yeah. this final, nobody wants to pick it up at the moment. And it is, it is what you can draw from that from this, Chris, is Bourget has obviously got a lot of respect for Kenny. He knows he won't dismiss him easily. This is where the nerves really do begin to jangle now. We've got one and a half laps to go, and these uh, sprinters now beginning to tickle the pedals and pick up the pace. And Kenny has opened a slight advantage. He nearly committed himself. Now he has committed himself. He's got just over a lap to go, but he hasn't applied full gas yet. Now down the back straight, he has. And it's Kenny leading this one out. Now let's look what Bourget has got. Here comes Kenny into the finishing straight. Here comes Bourget. Bourget, well, he does just... It's unbelievable. He is so quick. Bourget, 10.4, and really he never tries, or well, he never looks as though he's trying to be. Well, he's just the man on form, but uh, I have to say, hats off to Jason Kenny. He rode that absolutely beautiful, but uh, Bourget has just got the power now. Even coming right out to the edge there, just to make him to go the longest possible way around, but there's just no answer to that at the moment. Chris Hoy's astonishing career, 10 world titles he's won, but he's only won one sprint crown, actually. Pulled the stripes on just once for being the world sprint champion. Eleven years, Hoy's junior, Perkins.
this is the respect for each rider just reflecting both riders of course trying to out with the other Perkins just keeping a sharp eye out on Hoy to see that he's not going to try and jump clear and surprise him like Perkins is going to try and set himself up to lead this one out His big broad shoulders of Chris Hoy just like the fourth bridge strong very strong Perkins now in the back straight one and a half laps to go and Braveheart himself now begins to uh, get that gear spinning as he's going to try and close down on Perkins and tidy up the bronze medal. Bell lap, 2.50 to go to decide which way the bronze medal is going to go or is Perkins going to make it a contest that will be decided in three. Here we are into the finishing straight, Perkins leading out Chris Hoy. Here comes a challenge, clenched fist from Chris Hoy. I've got the bronze medal. Hoy takes it and it was cleanly fought and sportingly Acknowledging uh, Chris Hoy's performance there is Shane Perkins. Pretty easy, really, Chris. Well, Perkins didn't ride that too well, actually. He, uh, he basically gave him a lead out. What he should have done with the, in the one lap to go and such tried to stall uh, Chris Hoy as he was accelerating towards him. But he basically led him out beautifully. Chris just kept his height there, followed him down the track. And then as they came into the back straight, accelerated up and round the side not a great deal Chris Hoy slightly stronger than uh, Perkins on this occasion but tactically better so Chris Hoy wins 2-0 straight for the bronze medal well can Jason Kenny possibly push Gregory Bourget to a decider situation is Gregory Bourget has won race one and now Jason Kenny who is the current world champion has now got to somehow or other out with Bourget to take it to a decider, and there is the tactic they've worked on. Well, look at this. They've obviously talked this through, and this is a fantastic move. Well, Jason Kenny's decided to go for the long one. He jumps straight off the line, and now Bourget's on the back foot here. Bourget has got to catch Kenny, and this is a total commitment by Kenny. Bourget now beginning to uh, look at the back here of Kennedy, and he's trying to chip away at the advantage that the young tear away from Bolton is holding, but now Kenny's beginning to tie up, and so is Bourget. Bourget now is coming up to him. He's coming up to the shoulder of Kenny. They're both tiring as they come into the finishing straight, looking for the line. Can Kenny do it? Kenny does it. <laughs> it's one all. I think they might get him on that little flick outside oh, the no, red line. Please, no. And he didn't do it on purpose. Just sheer fatigue there. And I actually thought that Bourget was actually okay there but he was absolutely nailed but I, I so hope they don't but they might have him on a technicality there I obviously hope not but they talked that through and uh, let's hope that that stands this is the incident surely they're not going to disqualify well, him for that incidents I think uh, is too strong a word it's they need to look at it but come on it didn't affect the race there and, and they'd obviously talked the tactic through and what a tactic and it paid off didn't it Here's the decision coming now. Can you lip read, Chris? What is he saying? Well, he doesn't look happy. He doesn't want to have to say anything, but uh, let's just watch the pictures along with him. Great piece of camera work, this, actually. Oh, yes. No, oh, yeah, that's not it. Gonna give him yeah, that, are they? No, no, he's going he's gonna to be relegated, and Bourget will be the world champion, but what a fantastic effort. Oh, the boos are ringing out in the arena now. <laughs> the Aussies love a scrap, don't they? Especially when it's in the sprint. There it is then, caption tells us Jason Kenny sadly relegated, Bourget wins uh, Heat 2, so he is the world champion.